One of my earliest memories is of my grandfather telling me stories of his childhood. There is one certain story that stuck with me. My grandfather had this principal whose last name was Abu Lahab. Abu Lahab quite literally translates to father of flames. Abu Lahab was not a very nice man. So when my grandpa accidentally started a huge fire at school, he didn't think Abu Lahab would appreciate the irony. The only rational option in my grandfather's mind was to run away to his grandparents' house. And like any other grandparent, they loved seeing their grandson. So they fed and pampered him, oblivious to the fact that he might have just burned his school down. Eventually, he had to come back to reality, and he was more afraid of his mother's wrath than his academic future. The night back at home was spent with his mother chasing after him while she cursed herself for giving birth to him and his father trying not to laugh. Another story is of my father's. He was 13 and spent the summer at his uncle's sweet shop. After hours of kneading dough and packaging candy, he had the sudden urge to use the bathroom. His uncle's sweet shop did not have a bathroom. So he ran around the streets of Nablus, scouring for a stall. He was running so fast, he did not see a bike coming towards him. He got run over, and he still has the scar. The reason I remember these stories so vividly is because listening to them felt as if I were reading about some faraway fictional character. This explains why two of my favorite books are The Adventures of Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn. These books revolved around two boys who ran around causing chaos without any parental supervision. While these books did handle some vulnerable topics, they were mostly glossed over. Just like my family's stories, they only shared the funny and happy memories. So naturally, I'd assumed that their childhoods were just happy and fun, which is why I could not understand why they were so unhappy. And when I look at them, I just think about how absolutely baffling the very concept of family is. It is this group of people, it is this group of people you become a fundamental part of with your first breath. Loving them is woven into the very fabric of your existence, no matter how cruel they can be. You find yourself mimicking them, your anger becomes paralyzing, and they do not understand that you learned it from them. This behavior is not sudden. It's generational, passed down from parents who learned it from theirs. And then the classic question resurfaces. What came first, the chicken or the egg? Was the man who started your family wired to emotionally stunt his children who would end up passing it down to theirs? While this seems like a complicated debate about the nuances and interactions between nature and nurture, the answer is quite simple. It is a choice. It is a choice to uphold the cycle of a fragmented family. This is what we call generational trauma. Trauma passed down from one generation to the next that becomes the default state. The horrific experiences your parents went through become your own, and you end up passing it down to your children. Of course, this does not apply to every family, but that's not because they've never had any traumatizing experience but because they chose to break out of this vicious cycle. They chose to raise their children unburdened by the skeletons in their closet. They chose to raise their children unburdened by the skeletons in their closet. And like everything else, it is easier said than done. It is easier said than done. Uh, and like everything else, uh, it is easier said then done, we must remember that this is our parents' first life too. This is their first time raising a child that inherently idolizes them. This idolization leads us to expect utter perfection. And when this expectation is not met, we tend to resent them for not caring, for not trying hard enough, for hating us. But often, this is the love they know. Remembering this allows us to be more forgiving of our parents' mistakes, but at the same time, hold them accountable and accept that they can pain us 
and sometimes cause irreversible damage. Anger and resentment are blinding. They make us view the world in black and white. Our parents can either be good or bad. There is no this spectrum, there's no middle ground for this spectrum for parents, for parents who care for their children in the only way they know how to. When we categorize someone as bad, we do not see the good in them. We forget the happy memories, we neglect their kind gestures, and we fail to see their vulnerability. A newborn first sees in black and white and shades of gray. Their color vision begins to develop at about four months old. The first time I saw my father cry, his tears painted my world, and I felt like a five-month-old who first saw color. With this newfound perspective, I began looking through my childhood photos of us, and I noticed how he held and looked at me as if I were some heaven-sent gift. I slowly began to accept him as he is. We cannot fix other people unless we want to be better. I started to notice his small gestures, how when I called him, he always hung up and called me back so I wouldn't lose my phone credit. How when I told him I liked a certain food, he would come back the next week with heaps of it. How even after the most tiring day of work, he rarely fails to get me my favorite ice cream if I asked him. We are creatures designed for love. It is woven into our very seams. And uh, uh, parents typically experience a flood of hormones that create uh, a strong bond or attachment with their child when they first hold their newborn. Love is always around us and will always be around us. We are becoming and unbecoming. There is no prophecy that we will manifest the ugly parts of the people who raised us. We can either choose to be forever burdened by our haunting experiences or choose to be better, not only for, our se for our, the people we love, but for ourselves. Love is in the fingers of my mother as she braids my hair. Love is in the pot of noodles I cook with my friends at three in the morning. Love is in the biting words I throw at my brother. And love is in the way I can be so hurt by my father. How can one view the world in black and white? when it is so kaleidoscopically iridescent.